have a great group of folks with us today, and we thank each of you for joining us. I am Kara Pepper Day, Account Director based up here in Portland, Oregon, and joining us from Southern California is Tim Jones, uh, Grapevine's co-founder and Chief Customer Success Officer. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Kara. Hello, hello. Uh, if you guys have been one of our customers over the years, I'm sure you've encountered some of Tim's passion before. Well, this is yet another topic that fires him up. So we're covering today, converting insights into action. Today we'll look at some of the best practices for leveraging data collected in your beverage selling solution, how to interpret the data in your reports, and use the insights to build successful objective plans that yield real results. Just a little housekeeping, we are recording the webinar. It will be available for replay from our website along with other great resources. Uh, everyone is on mute, but please do type questions in the panel on the right hand, hand side of your screen. And we'll have, um, we've set aside about a half an hour, but we will have some Q&A time at the end. Um, and as always, if more specific questions arise from this review, please let us know and we can follow follow up directly with you and your team. Tim, I'll pass it over to you. Great. Thank you, Kara. Um, I, uh, you're right. I am very passionate about this subject, how to sell more and how to sell better. I've always been a pretty analytical person. Even when I was a sales guy working on the streets of, in New York City, um, I, I was making use of any data I could get my hands on to figure out how to sell more and, and, and focus on the right accounts, etc. cetera. Uh, and analyze performance. So now that we have had an opportunity over the last seven years to build grapevines into this this uh, you know beverage selling solution, uh, we've really refined uh, how easy it is to get at some of these insights and take action on them. Right? It's not good enough just to see and uh, report and 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 get, gather an insight, but it's important that the the the, the software help you take action on that. So we're going to show a few slides here quickly, um, and the real point of this uh, uh, webinar is uh, is really to kind of uh, show you how you can take you know, specific reports and dashboards uh, and and take action on them uh, and focus in on your leading indicators, right? Leading indicators uh, of sales. Uh, as well as your lagging indicators of sales. I'm going to define a little bit more about what those are in a minute, but they're pretty self-explanatory. The leading indicators of sales are the things you need to do to drive your sales, right? Your sales drivers. Um, you need to be able to plan, execute, and measure against those leading indicators. Um, but you also need to measure your lagging indicators. Your lagging indicators are the results. How many cases did you sell as a result of doing those things? So we're going to show you how you can focus on your leading indicators to really drive the behavior of your sales team and drive the action and activities of your sales team um, and, and turn it all into action plans. So one of the things I like to say before we even get started is, look, you, you have to do a couple of basic things. Number one, develop your sales strategy, which means that you've got the right product. You've got, you know, your 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 product is bottled. It's 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 in the market. It's raring to go. Uh, but what is your sales strategy? In other words, what accounts are you trying to sell your product to? Who are your target consumers? Um, and what are you doing uh, about actually um, implementing that plan in the field? And one of the things I think is critical is to be able to segment your account base. So the account universe in the U.S. is very large. The world is even bigger. And there are lots of different types of accounts where lots of different types of consumers go. You must segment your account base in order to focus your efforts. Otherwise, you are not fishing where the fish are. Right? You will be fishing in an entire ocean trying to catch that one special fish that you're looking for instead of fishing in a specific pond where you know there are lots of fish that you want. So segment your accounts and also um, uh, think about creating special groupings of accounts um, that may be even more specific than a segment. So within a fine dining segment, you might grab your top 
red wine accounts within the fine dining segment, right? Or your um, the top accounts on Bourbon Street in in New Orleans, right? That is a small group of of custom grouping of accounts that might be critical to executing your strategy that you want to focus on. So we're going to show you how you can utilize account sets in Grapevines to to drive all your uh, your execution. So let's talk first a little bit about lagging indicators, right? Lagging indicators are important, and you need to develop the right metrics uh, in your reporting to be able to measure these lagging indicators, right, which are your sales. And this is where 90% of suppliers and, and even distributors spend their time looking, right? What distribution do I have? How many cases did I sell, right, uh, this month versus last year, right? Those are the basics, and, and those are things everybody's doing. But the more meaningful insights come out of things like what's my distribution to target accounts, meaning how many of uh, how many of my uh, uh, how many accounts have I sold in my target segments or in a specific account set that I've set up? Um, what are my unsold accounts? What percent of my target accounts have I sold? Right? Those are really meaningful metrics that you can do something with. Uh, in addition um, to just standard volume and counting cases, there's velocity. And velocity can be defined in a lot of different ways by a lot of different people. One of the ways I like to, de to define it is, you know, how fast is a product moving in a particular account, right? So if, the, if a product's been in di distribution for six months in an account and they've sold six cases in that time, they have a velocity of one case per month, okay? So you can analyze the velocity of sale in your accounts to figure out where uh, your best accounts really are. It's not always just about which one are the, are the top in volume, but uh, include the time metrics and the number of months metric and you, and you will uh, attribute and you'll be able to find, kind of determine um, where the high velocity is and how to go and, and look for it and, and figure out what's driving it as well as reorders, right? Reorders are, are very important, but not a lot of people are able to look at it. We can show you how you can look at reorders in our system, figure out where you're getting them and where you're not, and do something about it. I'm going to show you all this in, a, in just a minute. But the leading indicators are where we really think people need to focus um, so that they can actually make some of these things, these insights actionable, okay? Your leading indicators, again, are the things you must do in order to sell cases. Okay, so things like uh, your, your sales drivers, right, or KPIs, some people like to call them. Things like account visits. If you're not visiting accounts, either you or your distributor, right, you're not going to be presenting your products. Uh, you're not going to sell anything. Okay, so if you want, measure how, how many accounts you're visiting. And are you visiting the right accounts? And at what frequency? Uh, measure how many presentations you've made and how many order commitments maybe you've got from, from accounts that you've presented to or visited. You need to be able to also get on cocktail menus, right? I mean, visibility is critical uh, as a sales driver. So, sorry, not just cocktail menus, but displays and POS placements and other merchandising activities. Those things drive sales. You need to be able to measure those and, um, and, and activate your brands by doing them. And then activation, right? Promotional events, staff trainings. These things drive sales. Does your are you using your analytics tools to uh, measure these leading indicators of sales, or are you just measuring the lagging indicators and counting cases? Let me show you the right way. So there's some key reports and dashboards that go along with leading indicators, and this is where we're going to demo. We're going to talk about activities uh, uh, that you can execute, these, your, you know, your leading indicating activities and sales drivers like cocktail menus or account calls or staff trainings or displays, and you'll be able to compare the velocity in the account, uh, the, the velocity of sale in those accounts to the activity that you've executed and figure out which, which activities are working the best. Right? You, should comp you should look at what activities you've done in your target accounts and account sets or accounts, different account segments. Um, you know, basic things like, hey, we've got some great accounts sold here. Have we done staff trainings in our top accounts? If you haven't, you should. And we're going to show you how you can answer that question and turn it into reality using grapevines. Same thing is true with menus. So within the, our system, we've always preached a methodology about um, look, you need to be able to uh, plan, execute, 
and measure all of your sales driving activities, right? In order to be uh, a really high performing team. Uh, and we're going to show you how you use Grapevines to do that right now. The last piece is to refine or redo or repeat, uh, right? So after you plan to do something, you execute it, and then you measure how it did, how you did. Uh, you're going to want to go back and start at the beginning again and say, okay, let's come up with a new plan. Based on those insights that I've gathered from these measuring, from this measurement, let's, what are the insights and how do I incorporate those into my new plan? Okay, so we're going to complete the circle. So before we jump into the dashboards, which I'm going to show you live here in Grapevines, um, I want to show you, share with you a, a great report that kind of actually this is a dashboard uh, in Grapevines that illustrates what we're talking about here. This is an example of a leading indicator dashboard, right? How are you doing against your sales drivers, and how are those things uh, impacting your volume? in your accounts. This is a very complicated dashboard. You probably wouldn't have all this stuff on here, but what you're being uh, shown here is a baseline of velocity, sales velocity in accounts, right? Um, and then what your velocity is in accounts where you've never done any activities, right? You can see, not as good. Uh, you can also see that where you have done activities, right, you're getting a much better uh, you know, rate of sale. Um, things like cocktail menus. When you're on a cocktail menu, you're getting a greater lift uh, out of the account than the baseline, right? Um, things like uh, log calls are also helping. So this is all dummy data, but it's just to illustrate for you. If you can plan, execute, and measure these leading indicating activities through the Grapevines tool and measure it against your sales, you're going to start to see what things really matter, and you're going to start to focus on executing these right, the right activities and driving your team to execute them in order to increase sales. Hey, Tim, is this a dashboard that customers currently have in their Grapevines instances? Some do. We, we have it in our template, and everyone starts out with, with this. If they choose to expose it or not is the question. If you are a Grapevines customer and you haven't seen this dashboard in your system, let us know. Uh, let your customer success manager know, and they can uh, turn it on for you with a click and, and configure it down to be even more um, specific to what your specific needs are. But yes, uh, every customer has the ability to do this in, inside Grapevines today. You know, while we have a mobile app, um, most of this deep dive analytics are done in the browser, right? In you know using uh, specific uh, dashboards that have been set up that are accessible only in the browser in our mobile app, which now runs both on iPads and on uh, Windows uh, mobile devices. You do have embedded dashboards on accounts and on a dashboard page and a home page, but this type of analytical uh, reporting is best done, you know, in the browser. Uh, and I'm going to show you here if I was a business analyst or a manager, or market manager, or, or whomever, and and how I could uh, make good good use of this stuff. We talked about um, account segmentation. That's pretty straightforward. But I want to talk to you for a real quick second about account sets. Account sets are a, 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 a object in Grapevines that enable you to come in and create a group of accounts, a custom group of accounts, based on any kind of attributes that you want. There's several different ways to select accounts to put into the set. Um, based on attributes of the account, even based on sales volume and other uh, transactional volume that we have in the system. You can see here we've got an account set called Cocktail Bars, and there are 37 accounts in this um, uh, account set. Uh, and I can see all those accounts here and the name and where they are. Uh, I can add accounts to the set uh, very easily. Um, so it's an easy object to manage and set up. If you want to make use of this in Grapevines, please let us know. Um, the benefit of this is really uh, pretty amazing. Um, I'm going to jump over to a, a, another dashboard tab I, he I have here called my Action Dashboard. You'll notice my first tab here is uh, an account set analysis. Um, and what I'm able to do in this dashboard uh, is apply filters at the top uh, across specific products or specific regions or territories or markets, uh, even premise type. Um, but I'm able to pull up here a specific account set, right? So we talked about um, the cocktail bars account set. If I'm to click on that and filter this dashboard down to, to that, uh, that specific account set, I can see I've got 37 accounts in this account set. Um, but it's also going to list all those 37 accounts down below, 
right here on the dashboard. Let me try to make this a little bit bigger on my screen so maybe it's easier for everyone to see. Um, so here are the 37 accounts that are in the account set. And what this is telling me without applying any filters so far is that um, this account set, uh, set of accounts is, uh, is up 32.3% in volume this year versus last year. The volume uh, this year versus last year is plus 113 cases. So this set of accounts is doing really well. This account set, even though it's only 37 accounts, makes up 0.5% of my total volume in the total account universe. This will give you an idea of how important this group of accounts are to your business. Okay? Um, I can see that of the 37 accounts in the set, I've actually only sold 24% of them so far this year. Uh, so I've got some room for growth. Uh, so as you see here, when I scroll down, I can see all the accounts, uh, and I can see that only the top ones have bought. I still have a whole bunch down here that haven't bought. Right? Um, I've got 76% of them have not purchased anything from us here to date. And of the accounts that we have sold, uh, the average account buys 51.5 cases uh, per year. I'm looking at it on a year-to-date basis from January through December of 2016, by the way. That's how I have my dashboard filtered. As you know, if you're familiar with this, you can filter your as-of dates right here at the top on almost every dashboard we build. So on an annual basis, I can see, wow, if I'm able to get one of these accounts in this cocktail bar set uh, on board, they've got the potential to do about 50 accounts per year. So pretty good. I've got one I call Top Accounts and Activities. This one is a dashboard that enables me to actually uh, filter down to um, you know, my top certain number of accounts, top 10, 25, 50, 100, 250, 500, um, and, and this is you know, customizable. Um, but it is also taking into consideration my filters. Right? So um, I'm going to reset this back to all. So when I, I change my filter on activity type, it's going to drive down to just show me how many uh, staff trainings I've done in the activity column. Here's an example of um, my top 10 accounts, uh, staff trainings. Let me, fit, let me go to top 50. And I'm going to show you how you can convert this report into an action plan that says, hey, I need to go and do staff trainings in these accounts. Right? Top 50 accounts, I can see the ones I've done staff trainings in, right? So let me put my staff trainings up high at the top. What I'm able to do now is take this and see, great, I've done four staff trainings in Juan's Swim Club. It's one of my top 50 accounts. Um, so that's great. But look at all these other accounts I haven't done any staff trainings in out of my top 50. Boy, that's not good. Um, so let me show you how you can convert this into an action plan. I want to do staff trainings in these accounts that I haven't done them in. So I can come up here and export this um, report. Um, I'm going to download it to a CSV. And what that's going to enable me to do is um, come back in here to uh, create an objective in Grapevines um, to go out and do those staff trainings in those accounts. So if I go over to my objective plans tab, right in my account planning section here, I can create a new objective plan. And this one is going to be, um, uh, this one's going to be uh, Eagle Malbec staff training in uh, top 50 is going to be my um, name of my, uh, my objective. Okay, so I save it. And I, now I just basically add all the attributes I want to that objective. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to pick my Eagle Malbec and um, assign uh, this objective to that label. What's it, Eagle Eye Malbec? Eagle yeah, Eye Malbec, mm -hmm. sorry. I'm going to say I want this to be accomplished by, let's give them to the end of the quarter. So the end of March, uh, it's a medium priority. Nobody's started it yet. The type of objective is going to be a staff training, and my description is um, in, uh, in this top 50 account. Okay. Great. So uh, I've set my objective, um, and I save it. And now I can find accounts. 
I can either find accounts to assign this objective to based on just basic attributes that live on the account record, like segment or market, uh, you know, territory, uh, geography, um, any, any other attribute I have. But I actually want to import this um, list of accounts from the, uh, the report I just ran. Right. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the report that uh, or select the report that I want to that I want to grab, which was this one I just downloaded, and I want to import it. Great. It's going to create objectives in these 50 accounts, and I click append, and it's going to add all those accounts to the objective plan. So now when I come and I look at my objective plan. I can see all the details about it here, and here are the 50 accounts that we're going to execute those staff trainings in. Right? Um, there's lots of other uh, different reports we can run on that. I'm just going to show you one now. Um, I've got a baked-in status report here right on the objective plan. So in real time, I can see what accounts I'm supposed to do it in. I can see the status of them, uh, and I can see um, how have any of them been started, which one have been closed won, which one of them have been closed lost, and evaluate how my team is doing executing against this. Now, as you know, once you've created these objectives, right, these objectives are now assigned to a specific person and a specific account in the system. So here's the objective, right, that's related to this plan uh, to get do a staff training for Eagle Eye Malbec in Flemings of Chicago, and it's been assigned to Kara, the sales rep. She now sees this in her reports. Uh, she sees it in her list of open objectives in her mobile app, and she can click on it and go execute it. She can also, when she goes to the Flemings Chicago account the next time, she can log a call and see that objective that she needs to accomplish and work on it, uh, even present some content like a, a presentation that's related uh, to this objective to help her win the, the or help her execute the staff training and then close the objective as closed one and uh, voila it will be um, uh, it will be tracked she can do all that from her mobile app uh, and you'll be able to track her progress and the status of, uh, of all of these objectives as people go out and execute them either by person or by objective plan right? Great, I got one done. Excellent. <laughs> Let me jump over and show you a couple more insightful dashboards that I think you're going to like. Um, but that one was really, uh, I think, one that, that demonstrates how you can turn um, some of the insights from a dashboard into um, uh, something that's actionable. Right? Um, I've got another one here uh, regarding order commitments uh, without RAD. Okay. Order commitments, if you guys are familiar with Grapevines in the mobile app, you visit an account, you sell something into a, a, a retailer or you, know, you get them to agree to buy a product, whether you're with your distributor on a work with or you're just a supplier working by yourself, um, you want to capture that commitment to make sure that order gets placed. This is a report running in Grapevines that said, look, uh, here's a list of all accounts where you've gone and you have logged an order commitment for a product. right? And they said they wanted to buy one case, but they haven't bought any. And I'm doing this one, in this case, I've, I've configured this to be on a rolling three-month basis. So if they've given me an order commitment in the last three months, and they have no sales in the last three months, I know i got an issue, and I need to follow up. My distributor needs to follow up, right? This is, a, this is just closing the loop here. I already sold them in the product, uh, as far as I'm concerned. So this one is another great example of a, of a report where you can take it, download it into uh, Grapevines, and create an objective uh, to follow up uh, to get that sale. You could also come into this report, right? I could schedule this report right here to be emailed uh, to me on a, on a schedule, maybe monthly, right? So that um, I can say, look, uh, uh, you know, um, at the end of the month, I want to see all the order commitments that have or the customer hasn't bought yet, and I want to pull this out. It's going to email me the report, and I want to send it to my distributor, right? Uh, or send it to my sales guys. Tell them, hey, go follow up on this. These are hot leads. Okay. Um, so that's one way you can get data out that make it actionable. We also do the same with reorders, right? We can track how how and if an account has reordered. This dashboard shows. Um, uh, accounts where um, 
how many times they've actually ordered, how many different products of yours they, they bought in the last 12 months, and when was their last order, right? This account bought in, in 16 days ago, so they're green, but this account hasn't bought in 105 days, it's yellow. This one hasn't bought in 265 days, it's red. You can do things like filter these down or sort them um, by the number of days of the last order. Um, you can, uh, you know, while you're looking at the report, um, you know, see exactly how much RAD they have um, in a year-to-date time period and even what the velocity is um, for, for that, uh, that account. You can filter this down by brand, label, or item. And again, now, I can take this um, dashboard and actually turn it into an actionable thing where I can set an objective for people in the field to go and follow up to get a reorder on this. These are my Griffin Bay tequila accounts, right? And I can see exactly who bought and when. Um, and uh, this one, this brand's in pretty good shape. Um, we've gotten a lot of good reorders here and we've gotten them recently. But if maybe I want to target this one customer, um, I, can, I can do a number of things. I can click right here on just this one customer and, and go to, uh, to visit that or go to that account record and create a one-off objective. Or I could download the report and, and create objectives in all these accounts uh, based on the filter criteria. Last one, uh, one accounts. Here's a good example of accounts that we have never sold before. And we just sold them for the first time in the, uh, uh, this month. Right, and I'm going to set this to be. It's set to three months. Let me set it to nine months. You might need so to put some show, more products. Yeah, this is going to show me uh, accounts that um, have not bought any product of mine because I've got them all uh, scheduled here uh, before, or I'm sorry, haven't bought any products in the last nine months, which is prior months, but did buy in the current month. Meaning, this account, Albano's Villa, bought for the first time this month. Okay, um, these are great. What I want to do about these new accounts, maybe I want to do a direct mail to these accounts to thank them for their business and maybe even send them a sell sheet. If I had this filter down to um, a product, Kara, I don't know how good our data is and I'm going to just see here. I'm going to pick a, pick a brand and see if I can get it down. Great. Here's accounts that bought our James, uh, James County Red um, Cabernet wine for the first time in the last nine months. Why not download this list, create an objective for my rep to go visit that account and present them with a, a shelf talker, right? Or uh, talk to them about maybe considering a display or maybe do a staff training. This account's just sold the product, bought the product for the first time. I guarantee you they don't know how to sell it. Go in, create an objective to do a staff training in, in these accounts, okay? So Tim, we are running a little bit short on time, but I think it's still important that you share um, a handful of those best practices just for general kind of dashboard usage. Do you want to kind of talk through that really quick? Sure. Please? Yeah, I could do that. Let me let me do that and um, go back to the PowerPoint here. I think I've got some of that in here. Um, by the way, we also have a whole national accounts, you know, reporting capability within Grapevines with, you know, the, the chain hierarchy being pulled in with all the children account rolling up. Um, and if you are recording that you are doing, that you are securing uh, authorizations in a chain, maybe a chain has authorized you to, um, you know, to, to, to carry a product on the back bar uh, or put it in distribution or you, they've given you a commitment to put it on a cocktail menu for the whole chain. Our tool enables you to track, or sorry, um, uh, create those records that say you've achieved those authorizations. But now you're able to track your compliance against them. So you can see your sales in accounts where you have authorizations. And anybody who hasn't bought, when they have, when they have an authorization for distribution, you can take that report and show it to your chain manager or send it to the actual um, headquarter buyer at the chain and ask them, hey, we still got some outliers here. Uh, and compliance is important because national accounts uh, take a lot of time and effort and money and you want to make sure you're getting everything you can. I'll show those on another demo, another webinar, Kara. We should schedule a national account specific one. But okay. some best practices, right, um, for, for your dashboards. If you don't have this stuff already set up, speak to your Grapevines uh, customer success manager and, and get this stuff enabled. Um, highlight your key KPIs, right, on a dashboard. Don't clutter dashboards with too much stuff in, in table style reports. Put some headlines out there, right, that are key metrics, key KPIs, like percent of, you know, target 
accounts sold, um, you know, year to date, or percent of my, uh, you know, fine dining account segment that has repurchased in the last 90 days. That's a single metric you can put on a report and show on a dashboard with drill throughs to get you to the detail. Right? Use graphs right, and trends to show what's going on. Um, but also uh, embed analytics directly into the application in GradeMinds. Sure, you have a home page dashboard, um, but you also have dashboards that live embedded on every single account in the system. One of the ones you should also make use of is you can have uh, an, a, a dashboard embedded directly on all of your distributor records in Grapevine. So essentially, you've got, uh, if you go to that distributor in Grapevine, you'll see an embedded report that's your distributor review meeting, right? All the key dashboards and reports you want to be able to go through with your distributor on a monthly basis. Uh, as we talked about, embed them on national accounts so that you can see specific national account compliance. Make good use of account sets so you're focusing on the right accounts, the important account. Measure yourself against those accounts and plan your activities in those accounts, as well as account segments. Uh, those are all critical. Whew, all right, Kara. I know you did great. Um, we had a couple questions. Uh, one or two of them are, are pretty specific and will follow up directly, but one of them um, that I think is pretty easy for you to answer um, is can you auto close or mass delete the corporate um, KPIs and objectives that, that you just showed what you can create? Can you also? Um, Yes, you can, absolutely, and, and you as a, as a manager or an admin can come into any one of these at any time, look at the, the plan, um, see the individual objectives, uh, see the results on a dashboard. You could come in and expire that. So if this is still open uh, past the accomplished by date, you could easily close all of these um, objective as closed lost, right, that haven't been closed one, um, and they will be removed from the person's list and they, they would simply be closed. You can do that through simple workflow or you can do it manually here as the admin. It's very easy to modify all the, uh, the remaining objectives that are in the system uh, to come in and, and do things like change a status uh, to close lost uh, for all the objectives that are still open or change an accomplished by date or, or anything else. So yes, that's all doable and possible. Okay, good question. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. Um, remember, don't just track your results, take action. And thank you so much, Tim. You did a great job. Great. Thanks, everyone. Look forward to talking again. Mm -hmm.